The standard version of the simplex algorithm is only to be used in problems with constraints that have less than or equal to a number. In this problem, we have several constraints that have greater than or equal to a number, and so we need to use a different method. There are two main ways of solving this, the two-stage method and the big M method. In this video, we'll use the two-stage method. First of all, this problem is a minimizing problem, so we need to set up Q as being the negative of P, which means that Q is equal to minus 6 minus 3Y, and we rearrange to get q plus 6x plus 3y is equal to 0. Next, we need to deal with our constraints. Looking at the third constraint, we have 3y is less than or equal to 2. So we can simply use a slack variable 3y plus s3 is equal to 2. This is taking up the slack between the value of 3y and 2. Initially, we have y equal to 0, so s3 will take the value 2. This is how the simplex algorithm works. Now we need to move on to the two constraints that have greater than or equal to. We set up x plus y and equal to 1, and of course we've got to get our constraint up to that value of 1. Because we're looking at values that can be greater than 1, we need to take up the surplus, and so we use a surplus variable. Now these variables must take positive values, so if x plus y is greater than 1, we need to subtract the surplus value. However, initially, x and y both take the value 0. And this means that x plus y minus the surplus value of s1 will be negative. x and y both 0, surplus is positive, we've got a negative value. And so we need to add in an artificial variable. This can now be said to be equal to 1. We can do a similar thing with our second constraint, 2x minus y is greater than or equal to 1. We're going to subtract the second surplus value and add in an artificial value. Now this is a two-stage method. Our first stage is that we want to solve a different objective function. We want to solve i is equal to the negative sum of the two artificial variables. Essentially what we are trying to do is we're trying to minimize that sum of the artificial variables. If we can get to a1 plus a2 equaling 0, then we've got a scenario where we can continue on to the second stage. So working through with this, we're going to rearrange our first constraint so that we can work out what negative a1 is, what negative a2 is, and then we're going to substitute them in. We can then gather terms and rearrange so that we've got all of our variables on one side and the value of minus 2 on the other. We can now construct our initial tableau. So what we've got here for our basic variables is we're going to take the artificial values. You'll notice that for the two constraints which have greater than, our basic variable is the artificial value. We're saying that our artificial value is taking the entirety of the value that x, y, s1, s2, and so on are equal to zero. So a1 has the value of one. In our second constraint, we have the same thing. a2 is equal to one. And in the third one, s3 is taking up all of the value of the constraint. So s3 is equal to two. We still include q, in this table with all the appropriate values in there, but we also include i at the bottom. So here's our initial tableau for that first stage. We then proceed with the simplex method exactly the same as we have done previously, and I'll add a link in the description below to my video on how to apply the simplex algorithm, because we're going to go quite quickly on it on this one. So taking that first tableau, we identify our pivot, and we then proceed with each of the operations. We've got x now appearing in our basic variables and some different values throughout. So our tableau 2, we're going to use that one now. We identify our pivot again, and then we proceed with another iteration of the simplex algorithm to take us to this point. In our third tableau, we now notice that in the i row, there are no negative values for any of the variables. Now, crucially, the value of i is equal to zero, looking in that value column in the i row. We have a zero there. Because that is zero, we can continue on to the second stage. If it was anything other than zero, and we had no negative values in that bottom row, we would not be able to continue. What it's saying is there is no basic feasible solution to the original problem. But because we've got zero, 
we can carry on. And what we do is we remove the I row and any columns with artificial values in, and we then proceed with the simplex algorithm as we would normally. For the second stage, you will need to complete as many iterations of the simplex algorithm as you need to to solve the problem. In this particular example, I've chosen one where we didn't need to do additional iterations of the simplex algorithm. You can see that the values in the bottom row for each of the variables are zero or positive. So we've actually reached the optimal solution already. However, in most problems, the second stage will consist of applying the simplex algorithm again until you can find a solution. Ordinarily, of course, you will need to apply it several times. Here we have our optimal solution there. We have the maximum of Q is minus five, but remember that this means that P is the negative of that, so we have five. Our initial problem was about P. And we have X being two thirds and Y being one third, with S3 taking up the slack being one. So the two stage method is quite straightforward, but the difficulty is in setting the problem up in the first place. Make sure that any of your constraints that are greater than or equal to, that you subtract a surplus and add in an artificial, and any constraints that are less than or equal to, you just add in a slack as you would normally. Set up I to be minimizing the sum of the two artificials, and then work your way through. And when you get to the point as shown on the screen at the moment, where I is hopefully equal to zero for its value and you have no negative values on that bottom row, remove that I row, remove the artificial variable columns, and then proceed with simplex algorithm with the remaining one as many times as you need to until you get to your optimal solution as you would usually. As I say, the two-stage simplex version is quite straightforward other than the fact you've got to be very careful about your initial setup. Good luck with this one. It can be a little bit tricky in places. Thank you.